What's going on guys, my name is Triforce Addiction, welcome back to another COD Mobile video. So, the patch notes for Season 1 has officially been released. And there are quite of interesting, there's quite a bit of interesting changes for guns that, you know, some of them do need buffs, some of them did not, and some of them might be questionable. You know how the patch notes are, you know, there's always a few questionable changes out there, but yeah, it's just crazy how fast we're getting all this information and just the fact that the Korean and the Vietnam version has already been updated for season one. Uh, for global, obviously, I'm not sure if it's going to be like this week or the next, uh, probably like a few days before the season. You know how it goes for us. We're always, you know, dead last on everything. But yeah, uh, let's actually begin with the patch notes. The first thing is the CAN44 chest multiplier. So it goes up from 1.1 times to 1.2 times. This basically means that from a certain range, you're going to be able to three shot if you hit all three shots on the head. So it's making it a lot more deadlier up close. So now we move on to the HVK 30. So the only real change is the upper arm multiplier. So I did look at this in game and I noticed that the upper arm multiplier was actually a lot weaker compared to the lower arm multiplier. So I guess they got something wrong there. I don't know if they like made a mistake, you know, at that point. But yeah, basically what this does is that it kind of increases the likelihood of getting a three shot or four shot kill, depending on what mag you use uh, more efficiently. And I could see this helping a lot, especially when it comes to just the base rounds, because now you are really going to consistently four shot. And the thing is that this gun got updated like a few months back, giving it like a 49 round mag. So that's going to be pretty insane. And given like the HVK, when it comes to its normal fire rate without large caliber is pretty fast. So I'm very excited to see how this is going to pan out really. So now we move on to the DRH. So the damage range was increased for at least the first three ranges. You know, it's a pretty massive increase, might I add. It's 14. It went from like 10 to 14, then 19 to 24, and then 22 to 24. So a pretty massive amount in my personal opinion. But also BR, the first range and second range did get buffed just a little bit. As for the BSA, it's also a lot better. So you're going to land your shots a lot easier. For the M13, the reload time did get reduced significantly, as well as the hit flinch. Um, you're not going to be flinching as much anymore, but for me, I personally use toughness, but that might change uh, given the FOV doesn't really have a lot of issues when it comes to flinch. But yeah, it's still, you know, pretty good to hear, like, nonetheless. Um, ADS time also did get somewhat improved by, like, 10 milliseconds. Um, of course, that doesn't look like much, but in the grand scheme of things, it might actually be a lot, especially for a gun like the M13. So now for the Odin, they did increase the upper and lower arm multiplier just a little bit, just enough to make it easier to two shot. As for the bullet speed, it also went up by 700 meters per second to 800, 850 meters per second. So that is a pretty massive change and it makes me consider using that little subsonic rounds. I always wanted to use those because it increases... Um, your range without having to like, you know, use a like a Colossus suppressor or even a monolithic suppressor So I might be able to use that now and I don't have to sacrifice too much movement speed So now we move on to a controversial change But something that I managed to come to terms with and for a good reason So obviously the Arctic 50 the stopping power reload uh, does help you one shot a lot better There's no arguing that but for me personally, I always tend to use the uh, like the 12 or 10 round mag because you know, I'm decently accurate I mean, it's not really that hard to miss with the Arctic 50, but this kind of needed to happen since the Sniper rifle itself was falling behind compared to like the SVD XPR, which is probably the most spammiest sniper that I could think of and Especially like the right tech AMR it needed to be kind of brought up with every other sniper that we currently have and I think this is this might be a good idea, uh, but of course it did. They didn't nerf like the recoil penalty, so it's more or less going to be the same, just slightly faster. So I don't think it's going to be too much of a big deal. However, this might really help in battle royale. So here we are introduced to another change. Uh, the QQ9 decided to flop back into being really good this time around. Um, the damage range did get improved by one meter on the first meter and one meter on the second. Uh, you know, the second range. As for the 10 millimeter 30 round reload damage, it did get increased at least up to the second range. Now it goes up to 23. Uh, that may not seem like a lot, but I did 
test this uh, within, you know, just in game to see how much damage it would actually do. So basically over 20 meters, you're going to be able to four shot if you hit around, you know, the upper chest arms and stuff. So it's a lot more viable at longer ranges. So as for the RUS, it did get a slight ADS uh, speed buff again. I mean, it, it was already fast. I didn't think it needed to change, but I guess they found a reason to do so. So I'm just going to go with it. I doubt it's going to create such an impact. So as for the Switchblade X9, the damage range did increase by two meters on the second range, and that's pretty much it. It might bring it up a little bit, but I don't really think it's going to be by too much. But given the fact that the QQ9 got a damage and range buff, I think this is actually okay. I always consider the Switchblade and the QQ9 now to be rivals. So yeah, so long as both of those weapons got changed positively, I mean, it, it should balance things out. So now we move on to probably one of the bigger controversial changes for this season or this coming season, I guess, in this case, uh, which is the HS2126, the fire interval between burst got reduced from 533 <laughs> Uh, milliseconds to 383 milliseconds so that is a whopping colossal amount so that means the burst is going to be extremely fast uh luckily they didn't buff the damage or anything like that so it's more or less the same as it is right now currently in season 11 but given that it could burst a lot quicker and you could shoot faster uh, and you could also maximize the range i could see this becoming a, an extremely powerful um you know shotgun and given that it has been neglected for well pretty much like the start of, of the entire fucking game i'm gonna let this one slip for now i'm just gonna i'm just gonna say that right now I, i'm just gonna let it slip because it's been neglected for like the entire the entirety of like call of duty mobile's life cycle a lot of people are considering this change to be making this shotgun into the meta but i don't really think so maybe it is maybe it's not we're just gonna have to wait and see but yeah, it's kind of questionable and it's scary at the same time. But given that the recoil didn't change as well, it might be a lot harder to control when you're ADSing. So the PKM got a surprising change. The ADS movement speed did get increased, so it's a little bit faster. As for the ADS time, it also got decreased, making it, you know, faster as well. Uh, this kind of needed to happen given that the PKM kind of requires a lot of recoil attachments to keep it stable. Uh, the PKM for you know, for the most part, has not really been that reliable. And given the fact that I think that little holiday dual draw is still around for the QXR and the PKM, I think this is an excellent idea. It makes people uh, inclined to buy the draw a little bit more. So this is pretty much in, you know, COD Mobile devs and I guess Activision's best interest. So the SPR also got a change. The damage went up from 77, 72, 73 to 77, 73. So basically it's been reduced down to two ranges, meaning that you could actually one shot a lot further now. I think almost at infinite range, so long as you use this mag. Um, of course, the .300 five round reload for the SPR is kind of like a standard for multiplayer at least. Um, as for Battle Royale, I'm not sure if the damage range uh, changes also apply over there, but um, I guess you guys are gonna have to wait and see for whoever plays in that mode. So the J358 also got some pretty interesting changes as well. The third range as well as the fourth range got improved from 35, or well, sorry, from 2035 to 3050. So that's a massive change. And that might help with the stopping power reload as well. So you might be able to one tap across the map. I'm not really that sure, but it is a possibility. Uh, the reload time as well did get slightly changed. Um, it might help, especially if you're using like an eight round or the stopping power reload. So yeah. So we also have a surprising change for the Renetti as well. The fire interval between burst went from 345 milliseconds to 300 milliseconds flat. So yeah, you're going to be able to burst a lot quicker. And this is probably going to be like, it's probably going to make it even more deadly than it already is. I mean, the, the Renetti is my personal favorite uh, sidearm to use. And seeing it get improved even further, oh my god, I am actually kind of worried. So now for the shorty, the base damage got improved from 24, 15, 13, 12 to 25, 16, 13, 12. So a slight improvement to the damage. I'm not sure if that's going to make any difference, but I'm assuming the damage is per pellet. So again, I don't know. I think the shorty usually has a smaller amount of pellets. Um, as for the slug rounds, or I guess the slug damage, it did get improved from 104 to 105, um, 87 to 88, and that's pretty much it. Um, my problem with this, especially with the slug rounds, is the fact that 
they're not accurate for shit. If you've tried using slug rounds, ADSing, or even hip firing, it is not accurate at all. I was kind of hoping that they would decrease the bullet spread at, like, you know, at least for the slug rounds, because again, they're not really that efficient. So yeah, that was my, that's my real only complaint about this change. I mean, instead of increasing the damage, you could have just uh, helped with the accuracy. So now we've moved to the final change, which is the Elkar 9. So it did get improved uh, damage from 25, 22, 15 to 26, 22, 15. So really the, the first range was the only thing that got, that did get slightly improved. Um, but I don't really see it being too deadly. I mean, given that the Renetti just got a incredible burst improvement, I think... Yeah, this one's still going to be blown out of the water by all their other pistols. So I don't think it's going to make that much of a massive change. So yeah, those are pretty much all the changes for, you know, season one. All the patch notes are just there. It's just one singular page, but with some massive changes. Um, I was actually expecting a lot more, but I guess if this is the path that they want to take, you know, buffing stuff a little bit more, I guess that's fine with me. Um, you know, as for the can 44 giving a three shot potential, I don't know if that was really the best idea in the world. I mean, it was already pretty deadly, so I don't understand why they had to, you know, buff it even more. It's kind of like the bison. It's just the can 44 constantly gets buff and never really ever gets nerfed. And it's getting to the point where it's starting to become a concern. But for the most part, some of the changes were just multiplier changes. The HVK might be a very handy weapon. It may, it may not be the best, but... Given that it has like a 49 round mag with, you know, very minimal downsides, I could see it kind of coming in handy at some points in time. And also for the Arctic 50, I know a lot of people are concerned with, you know, like another spamming sniper. Keep in mind the Arctic 50, uh, because of the stopping power mag, has a much slower fire rate. So it's not going to really create that much of a difference. It's just going to make it slightly faster. And it kind of needs to be given that it's like falling behind massively against all the other snipers in the game. But hey, at least now I have a reason to use the Zodiac Beast uh, Arctic 50 that I got like a long time ago. So yeah, that's pretty cool. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to leave a like, make sure to subscribe for some more COD Mobile content, and I'll see you guys next time.